We went on retreat. We went together. on retreat together. We went to a That's right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. She got to go to the Helias. Woo. She's never been the same. And she just, God has called her to do a lot for the community in Katy, and she's done different things. But right now, I'm gonna, she's going to share about what she's doing right now. And this is Denise Moore. All right. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here with you today. And as Susie said, we met, um, there, there's just this network of people in the community that are in love with prayer. Yes. And we love to pray. So this, uh, God has just been going in this place and saying, pick you, pick you, pick you, pick you. And it's people from everywhere. And he's just connecting us in just such a magnificent way that we have all come together in multiple opportunities at the Great Southwest Prayer Center uh, to move toward this 24-7 uh, prayer. So it's an honor to be a part of this with Susie and the rest of the gang. And what uh, Susie was saying, I've been involved quite extensively in the community for the, almost the past five years. Mm -hmm. First with uh, Compassion Katie, where we were, our sole reason for existing was connecting the body of Christ in the community to serve outside the four walls of their churches. Amen. And so that is a very, very successful ministry. I just recently handed it off to my really, really good friend, Sue Hetrick, who is now leading Compassion Katie. And I stepped into this role as the president and CEO of Katie Cares in December. So let me tell you a little bit about Katie Cares. We are a therapeutic home for single moms and their kids in the Katie area that are facing situational homelessness. So what does situational homelessness mean? It means probably they're not living in a car, but they can't afford a house of their own. They can't afford an apartment, things like that. So um, they might live with this friend for a little while until the welcome gets worn thin. Then they pick up everything and move and go live with another friend or maybe an aunt or a grandparent or whatever the case may be. But it is a... Um, a philosophy called couch surfing. Mm -hmm. So that's what these moms, they get caught up in this cycle of couch surfing. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for that, they would be in a car mm -hmm. or on the streets. But the thing about these moms mm -hmm. that's really important to understand is they're hardworking, they love their children, they're trying the best they can, and they are just stuck. They have no option at their fingertips. And that's what Katie Cares in this community represents for them. We offer them the opportunity to literally come in, hit the pause button, bring the noise level down, and then focus on the things that they need to focus on in order that over a, a specified period of time, they would become self-sustaining. So what we are able to do for each one of our mothers is first of all, understand where they are, how long they've been there, and why are they still there? It's understanding the why they're still there that's important, because that's why they're stuck. And so that way, we are able to build a customized program for each mother and her family. So we're not a cookie-cutter organization, nor are we a, an emergency shelter. Moms qualify for our program. They are qualified through the Katie Independent Schools District, through the Pregnancy Health Center, through Young Living, and sometimes from time to time uh, through our churches and other organizations. So the mother that qualifies for our program, we consider it kind of like a scholarship. They come into our home, they can be with us for a prescribed period. It can be six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, and in extended circumstances, it can be up to 24 months at no cost to the mother. So we have a um, 3,000 square foot house that is out off of Katie Hockley Road. We're out on a um, little, little over two acres. So this is not just a house on a piece of property. This is a home for these mothers. When, you, uh, when we purchased the house, it was a shambles, <laughs> an absolute wreck. Yeah. It was 40 year old wreck, um, 500 volunteers, and 25,000 volunteer hours, we took that house apart and put it back together again. Now when you walk into this home, it's warm, it's inviting, it's comfortable, it says this is home. Um, the, we have three families 
currently residing at the, the house is um, named for the Ballard Foundation because they are a key uh, sponsor for us. So in honor of Monty Ballard's daughter, we named the house the Rachel Ballard House. Um, so you will hear me refer to it as the Rachel Ballard House as a result of that. Um, the three mothers that are currently residing at the Rachel Ballard House are three young moms. They have uh, a total of five children between them, ranging between the ages of two and five years old, and we have a baby coming in January. So our first mom is a mom that dropped out of high school in the 10th grade. She made a lot of really, really bad choices in a bad way with her mom and her family, so not a healthy relationship. And so she has been one of those moms that has just kind of couch surfed all over the place. She is now with us and with her two-year-old daughter getting ready to have a baby. And her testimony to us is, this is the first time in my entire life I've had a place that I can call home. And she will be with us until she gets her GED, until she gets a vocational training, and until she gets um, delivered from all of these generational issues that she has experienced over her lifetime. We won't be releasing her out of the home until she has reached those very specific goals. Our second mom is a, a mom, She's uh, she finished high school, she has some skills, but she's divorced, she has a four-year-old little daughter. She's stuck in minimum wage level. She cannot rise above the minimum wage level. It's also difficult for her to improve upon her education because all of you know what it looks like to be a mom. Yeah. It's a full-time job and then some. Mm -hmm. uh, so she hasn't been able to take her attention away from her daughter in order to enhance her career and her education. She's with us now because she's with us. She's able to reduce the number of hours that she's currently working at her job and she is focusing on a vocational uh, training uh, program that will help her break into being a dental hygienist. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome for her. Our third mom is a mom who is in the process of a divorce. She has escaped from a uh, terribly, terribly traumatic and violent marriage. Mm -hmm. And this is a woman who has um, some education. She actually has her bachelor's degree, but she's been a stay-at-home mom all of these years. She's never used any of those skills. Mm -hmm. So in the job market, she's not yet able to position herself in a role that can help her make the kind of income that she needs to be self-sustaining. So she's there and we're going to help her focus on that. What is that going to look like? The moms in our house not only will develop these educational skills, but they will develop life skills. They will develop all kinds of financial management skills. They will also uh, develop parenting skills, some of which these moms need some parenting skills. They've been pretty busy just hanging on by a thread, but they will also, more, most importantly, they will come to know who they are in Christ. Mm -hmm. That is our ultimate goal, that when these mothers exit going outside the doors, going the other direction, that they will have a very solid identity in who they are, and they will be self-sustaining, and they will be Katie Cares mothers forever. So what does that mean to all of you? Well, we're looking for advocates, obviously. I believe first and foremost, people must become advocates before you can become supporters in any other way, especially financially. So we invite you to come to get to know us. Uh, spend more time with me so I can tell you more about our home and our families and our children and where we're going and what we're doing and what our difficulties are and what our uh, celebrations are. But I also would invite you to pray with us. That is the most important thing that you can do is pray for each one of these mothers in the transformational journey that they're on and what God has purposed and planned for them for their life. They don't even yet have a clue. And I'm excited for that, mm -hmm. for all that to be unveiled for each one of them. So I thank you for the time that you've allowed me here. It's a privilege. You can tell I'm very passionate about Katie Cares. I'm passionate about our mothers, and I'm passionate about our community being on mission with God yeah. together outside our four walls to serve those
those that are on the margins, such as our mothers, and love them like Jesus does. So thank you. organization in November of 2016. Uh, we bought the, we went on the campaign to buy the property and renovate the property and build our team and build our programs. Uh, so now we have families in the home. Does that answer your question? Um, I guess I have two questions. One is, and I think you mentioned about you go through the KDISD to recruit, so to speak. But are there other means besides the church? I mean, how do people find you? Or do we recommend people to go to your place? And So the answer is yes or no. Okay. So it's more difficult. It's not impossible, but more difficult for us to take a mother just cold off the streets. Okay. What we'd like for people to do and organizations to do is to learn what they can about the mom. If they are, if they are a mother of children, uh, between the ages of birth and 10 years old, if they're in school and they are struggling, we ask them to be engaged with their counselor. And the counselor spends the time to get to know them and understand where they are and what's happening. And so they become a partner with us in the, in the uh, referral process. We do the same thing if you encounter a single mom that's pregnant. Refer her to the Pregnancy Help Center. They are able to do all of that upfront vetting for us and prepare the mother for a referral process. Same thing with Young Living. Uh, there's a new organization that you're going to learn about over the coming months. Um, it's called YMI, and I can't remember what the name for the acronym is right at this moment, but we are partnering with them as an on ramp organization. So they will be. A group that on a referral basis also can take these moms in on a very temporary basis it could be three months for instance as we make determinations where the best place for this family is so Katie cares is obviously uh, a home that can be um, a place for this on ramping organization to send their mothers but there are others throughout the state of Texas so if we're limited in the number of families. We can only handle four families at a time at this time. Our growth plan is to be able to build a much larger organization and be able to house up to 20 families, maybe 25 families. But we're partnered with multiple organizations all over the state of Texas that where we can make sure that as quickly as possible we can get moms into facilities that are wholesome and healthy and helpful. And then the second question was just from a logistical standpoint, you got three families, you know, at the center there. How does that work? Is there some staff person who yes. oversees them or uh, do the three families blend or are they prohibited from, you know, interacting with each other? Oh, that? no. It, uh, we have the most amazing woman on the planet Earth, and I think she was born straight from heaven, maybe. <laughs> She was gifted to us by God. I didn't find her. She found me. Mm -hmm. And it was just this amazing thing. And it started with prayer. <laughs> so, And uh, her name is Jackie Hamilton. She lives on the property. She's our resident services coordinator. So everything that happens at this house is under her management. Okay. So all three of the moms are encouraged to live in community. That is one of the things that these families are missing in their life is the sense of community. They have felt like they are alone and they are on their own, isolated, isolated have no help. Yeah. So a sense of family, sense of community has really been foreign to them. These moms are already like this. Yeah. We're really proud of them. So is this a growing concern in Katie area? Oh my. <laughs> well, it's growing so naturally. We, there, we have literally zero facilities of any shape, form, or fashion or homeless, period, yeah. much less 
uh, homeless single moms and their kids. And it is a huge growing concern. Katie Cares is the only facility of this sort in our community. There's nothing else. Are you familiar with the Dream Center, Joyce Meyer Ministries, mm -hmm. or Nancy Alcorn Ministries? I interviewed, almost went to work for her. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we are an up and coming, growing organization. We're just scratching the surface of really getting moving and what it is going to look like to serve these mothers and these families in this community and be able to transition and transform families and from being families that need all of these social services and assistant, assistance to being families that can contribute back to the community. Okay, any other questions? What is your number one need right now? Besides prayer, but that was what I was going to ask. <laughs> well, prayer is absolutely the top of the list. Um, finances are always on the list. One of our Key needs in our household, it, we average anywhere from four to five hundred dollars a month to put groceries in the pantry. And so what I typically ask church groups and prayer groups and Bible study groups is if you'd be willing to put together a, a weekly or even a monthly um, food drive for us, mm -hmm. we can provide the list of the things that we need that make the most sense to the family. And we would be overwhelmed if that would be something that you would uh, be willing to do. But I will trust God to speak to each one of your hearts, and He will tell you exactly what He thinks. Okay. What about clothes? Are you? Uh, do you ever need clothes? No, we are well. We are partnered with Clothe by Faith. Okay. So Clothe by when our mothers come in, they immediately get introduced to Clothe by Faith, and they're provided with a week's worth of clothing upon entry. And they get updates on their clothing throughout the period of time they're here. We're also partnered with Christ Clinic, who helps us with all of our medical needs. And furniture, her house is completely furnished, furnished from okay. top to bottom. So money and food. And prayer. And prayer. Money <laughs> and food <laughs> and prayer. Put it in prayer and food and money. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. So if y'all would like to bless oh, this ministry, uh, how would they make out a check? To Katie Cares. Katie Cares. Right. Okay. And if you would like to make out a check or give an offering to this, on Tuesday morning, I don't take an offering, but I tell you what I do do, I raise money for other ministries oh, on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. morning. But that, that whatever comes up for Tuesday morning it goes for other ministries. So that's kind of what we do around here on Tuesday morning, <laughs> instead of uh, instead of. Um, so we need chairs on the There's a handout. Everything. The handout is on the yeah. has everything you can imagine about Katie Cares. It's one of the most I told her that that we were looking for a house like this for our church. Uh, that's the first thing I thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is like a great house for us. <laughs> so one of our mothers, when she walked in, she said, oh my goodness, I think I'm moving into an HGTV house. <laughs> uh, so then that's all at the hands of our donors and our volunteers. I mean, it's just Decor like, lots of decorators. Yeah, yeah, decorators come forward. People donate stuff to decorate the house. There are no new furniture. And we have several people that are partnered with us that are decorators came in and just mm -hmm. put it all together and made it look beautiful. Okay. And we have chickens and eggs. And Whoa. An aquaponics garden that's wow. going to be uh, bunnies and goats Whoa. are coming. And, oh, right. Everything is therapeutic. That's awesome. Okay. Well, we like to know what's going on in Katie. Sometimes we um, get really busy with what we're doing, and we should. We are always glad to have the Katie Churches involved in um, in what we're doing and us with them. Okay, Jesus Christ in the Tabernacle, the Holy Place. Let's sing. This the Holy Place is about the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, can we sing a song about? The Holy Spirit, come Holy, Holy Spirit, join you know Holy Spirit song. Holy Spirit, now art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, now art welcome in this place.
made according to the pattern of heavenly things. You remember the Lord spoke to me in, I guess it was last year. Carolyn, that which is yeah. his heaven, that which is heavenly will be heaven on will be heavenly on earth. So I have been looking for a greater visitation of heavenly on earth ever since he spoke that to me. Yeah. Hebrews 5 through 6. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Yeah. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, says he, that you make all things according to the pattern shown to you in the mount. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which is established upon better promises. So it will be my attempt to preach uh, not all these little nuts and bolts of the tabernacle, which is wonderful, and I would need a big screen. <laughs> but to show you the spiritual part of the tabernacle that reflects heaven. This is my goal. This is my hope to do. That which is in the tabernacle that reflects heaven. Mm -hmm. That which is in heaven will be heavenly on earth. Ezekiel 43, 10. Son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. The holy place is the spirit-filled realm of great salvation. Hebrews 2, 2 through 4. But the word spoken by angels was steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience, by the way, that means angels speak, just so you know. Yeah. Angels do speak. To, they still do speak to you. And every transgression and disobedience receive a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Which at the first begun to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that hear him. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. will. The realm of great salvation is the realm of the Holy Spirit. It's the realm of the gifts of the Spirit. It's the realm of the offices of the Spirit. And the Feast of Pentecost is the Holy Spirit. Caroling, the Feast of Pentecost, uh, the Holy Spirit, that's why he said Caroling, the Holy Spirit is Pentecost. Duh. <laughs> Duh! The sixtyfold and the young man of First John two thirteen. Jesus Christ is our light, our bread, and our high priest. Today we'll study the candlestick of the Holy Ghost baptism, the gifts and fruit of the Spirit, the Apostles' doctrine, the branch of the Lord, and the anointing oil. If y'all go to sleep, you know we'll. <laughs> <laughs> I was overly ambitious when I started this on the holy place. I thought I could teach the whole holy place in one day. And about, I guess about, oh, it was about 10 o'clock last night. I had just finished with the candlestick. <laughs> I, 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 I thought, uh, Lord, we'll do the showbread next week. We'll take the showbread. But I already had a teaching on the anointing oil. And so I brought it into this so that I did add the anointing oil into this. So that is good that I could build upon my, it, if you've been preaching long as I have, I got teachings on all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but uh, it's good that I can bring things in and just keep building. Someone told me I was going to be getting all my papers together, so this is one of those. But the realm of the holy place, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is a separate experience from conversion. Today I'm going to be teaching on the Holy Spirit. This experience can be received anytime, in any place, and posture. Now I do know some folks that I think they got I think they got saved and baptized with the Holy Spirit all at the same time. But it is two different experiences. <laughs> you got you got it all at one time, praise God. 
<laughs> yeah, I did get, I didn't. I mean, I had to. Get, I had to get through that intellect to get to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and this experience is a command, not an option. Ephesians oh, okay. 5, 17 okay. through 18, if you will look that up. The realm, I'm talking about spiritual realms here. See, this is the way the Lord showed me when he brought me into this. You know, when I came out of my four years and God brought me in full-time ministry. During that four years, he showed me these heavenly things. And this is what he showed me. And it wasn't until I came to Texas, and that along about that time is when I ran into Kelly Moore and George Warnock, Clay, Clay St. Samuel, and they were teaching it from that realm. That I, well, there's some other people on the planet like me. <laughs> it's so no, good to know. Good to know. You're not on that mountain alone. Yeah, no. validation. <laughs> But the realm of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the gift of fivefold is also the realm. This is the second heaven. Uh, this is of fallen angels, demons, powers and principalities, sin and iniquity. It is misunderstood, and I was one that I just thought it with what I was coming into the gifts. When I was coming into the prophetic, I thought these people that were carrying these gifts were some were very holy yes, and right. very godly people. Amen. No, no, no. You're right. It is misunderstood mm -hmm. that people who are graced mm -hmm. with powerful gifting and are in office of the fivefold are living as overcomers. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're still fighting in that realm of the holy place. The holy place, <laughs> excuse me, is where they receive their gifts. The holy place is where God poured out the Holy Ghost on them. Yeah. This is a place where he separated them. It's even a place where he might set them into the office. Yes, yes. But they are still struggling with their demons. Yes. <laughs> the overcomer is the one who has matured through the realm of the holy place. Or the second heaven. All meaning the same thing. They have overcome and crossed the golden altar as overcomers. Y'all looking at me? Do I, is this? No, say that that's one more time, but overcome. Okay. Like, and if the, temp, the temple is the pattern of that which is in heaven. Okay, the outer court is before you receive, is, is the area of salvation. Mm -hmm. you, you are saved at the brazen altar of the cross. You're washed by the labor of the word. And then when you get to the place of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you move into the holy place or the second heaven. Okay. In the outer court, you're still in the first heaven. Yeah. And when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you are in the realm of the Spirit, mm -hmm. and you're in the second heaven. Okay. And in this realm, um, I forget how what, what I said to bring there, bring us there, is the place for overcomer. Yeah. This is the realm where, well, we're overcoming out in the outer court, too. We're over. But I don't think the overcoming was as much challenging in right. the outer court. Yeah, I agree with that. It was not as challenging. The fire didn't hit so much until we got into the holy place. We were getting there. Okay. If you read in Ezekiel 8, 3 through 9, the idol of jealousy... And wicked abominations are in the entrance of the holy place. Now, oh, hey, come in, Lord. We'll get to pray for you today. So glad to see you. Okay. Um, okay. So, when you came into the baptism of people out of the outer court, remember how nice they were? Yeah. They had church hands? Yeah. And they were so polite and cool. <laughs> And everybody was, and you got into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and somebody was so jealous of your gift, mm -hmm. and they're jealous of you, mm -hmm. and they're competing, mm -hmm. and they're trying to show off their gifts, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, got all this going on. Why is that? Because the idol of jealousy is at the entrance to the Holy Place. Why is he there? He's for you to overcome being jealous of someone, but you've got to also overcome someone being jealous of you. Yes. And until you do, that's the process. But that's not all that's in that holy place. There are wicked abominations.
denominations. I'm talking about in the realm of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel 8, 3 through 9. Once you got across that point, you were in a safe place. <laughs> if the battle begins, that's when the battle starts. Okay, Ezekiel 8, 3 through 9. He stretched out what looked like a hand and took me by the hair of my head. Ezekiel 8, 3 through 9. The Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven, and in visions of God, he took me to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the north gate of the inner court. The inner court is the holy place. The outer court is, is the outer court. Okay, to the north gate of the inner court, where the idol that provokes to jealousy stood. Hmm. Why would God allow that thing to be there? Because he knew we had to overcome our flesh. Yes. And church, if you haven't overcome your jealousy, someone else's gifts and calling. Mm -hmm. If you haven't overcome the jealousy mm -hmm. of someone else's ministry mm -hmm. or someone else's platform, mm -hmm. you're going to stay right there until you do. Yeah. And then you will have to overcome the hurt of other people being jealous of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know a little bit about that. I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. You've got to put you in the time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just that. And, uh, and this, you're, this you're going to have to overcome. Okay, that's not all. And I, then he said to me, Son of man, look toward the north. So I looked, and in the entrance, north of the gate of the altar, I saw this idol of jealousy. Now this is God speaking. I skip down. Mm -hmm. So what they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel commits, Okay, if you come out of a, of a church that teaches nice, that has grace, and teaches graciousness, and you come into a Pentecostal group, and you see all these abominations, you can realize how confusing that is. <laughs> how too confusing. Okay, it is so. We have, they have they have not overcome. Yeah. That's good word. And they're not even nice to you sometimes. That's <laughs> okay. I looked. But this is I'm not being hard on you, Pentecostals. I'm a Pentecostal too. I'm telling you, this is the process that you have got to go through in order for you to be an overcomer and for you to come into that level of maturity of the fullness of Christ. Amen. And it is written in the book according to the pattern that is in heaven. Yes. And Carolyn, that which is in heaven will be heavenly on earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving right along here. I looked behold a hole in the wall, and he said to me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. I'd be like, No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, He empowers us to overcome and continue our spiritual journey mm -hmm. through the holy place to the realm of maturity. Okay. It, it, you know, I'm looking at people in this room. When I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I thought I had it. Yeah. You know, I'd arrived. Mm -hmm. Only to find out in that place, all my sins began to show up too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I made a mistake. Lord, you know, pray, boldly pray David's prayer. Yeah. Oh, Lord, if there's anything in me, show it to me. I said, finally, I think I'd turn it off again. <laughs> 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 you know, I can't, we can't help, but just take this thing one at a time. Yeah, you know, one at a time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the priest before entering the holy place had to be clothed upon. 
with a change of garments. Mm -hmm. This experience brought him into the light of the word, the ministry of the body, and the blessing of spirit, anointed prayer, and praise. The anointing changes on the worship. There is worship in the outer court, but there's a different worship in the Holy of Holies because the Holy Spirit takes the worship then, and the Holy Amen. Spirit lifts the praise and worship to another realm. The same thing in the Holy of Holies. The level of the worship changes. We move into a different level of worship. The study of the candlestick is a revelation of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It would take the entire book, and we're not going there today. You want to know all the little details, read that book right there. <laughs> there was not a mold for the lampstand. Okay. The work of the candlestick was also made according to the pattern which the Lord showed Moses, says the Word of God. The entire lamp stand was created from one piece of gold. Unity of Christ and his church and his divinity. Hebrews 2.11 For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. Mm -hmm. Both he who sanctifies and you and I are all of one. So we're not living where we ought to be living on that. But that's the plan. That's the pattern. <laughs> that's the pattern in heaven. That which is in heaven will be heavenly on earth. That's the pattern. Ephesians 2.15 By setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put down, he which he put to death their hostility. Christian, if you and I and the Jewish people, and uh oh, we're not even worried about the Jewish people. Let's take all the denominations. Yeah. Let's take all the churches. Let's take all the doctrines of all the churches. Uh -huh. And everybody that knows exactly what we ought to be doing, <laughs> this bunch over here says we ought to be evangelists. Right. Praise God, I'll bless you to be an evangelist. This one over here says we ought to be teaching the word. Another one over here says we ought to be a faith movement. And on and on and on. And if you're not doing what I'm doing, then you're not doing the right thing. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. But if we all go to the cross, uh -huh. he has put down all hostility all of our judgment of one another yeah. that everybody's supposed to be doing what I'm doing. Amen. No, I'm called to do what I'm doing. Amen. Huh. And hopefully some more folks somewhere. Amen. <laughs> the lampstand reveals the Trinity in light and life, the vine and branches. John 15, 5. And the light was to never go out. It should never go out. Christ, the light and life, reveals the nature and ministry of God. The church, the light and life, reveals the nature of Christ for the collective body and the individual believer. Can you say that again? Mm -hmm. The church. Okay. Jesus Christ is the light and life, and he reveals God to us. Okay, the church, we're to reveal the nature of Christ, both collectively and individually. Yes. The nature of Jesus is revealed through the fruit of the Spirit. The life and ministry of Jesus is revealed through the gifts of the Spirit, which flow following the Holy Ghost baptism. The gifts of the Spirit extend his ministry. The extended nature of Jesus in us, the pattern of that which is in heaven, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Yes. When 
I first began to preach, I taught on the fruit of the Spirit because it's, uh, uh, y'all have no idea. Okay, so I'm teaching Pentecostals. <laughs> and they don't want to hear about the fruit of the Spirit. They want to hear about the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're already fighting over their gifts. Yeah. <laughs> so I come along teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. Because if you don't have the fruit, your gifts are not going to minister to anyone. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Titus 2 7. In all things, showing yourself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing incorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. Mm -hmm. The pattern son Jesus in the temple. Is the New Testament pattern for our lives and our worship. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The anointed word revealed through the apostles' doctrine is light and life. I posted on Facebook and I came down. That, it was a moment. I was coming down the stairs getting ready to meet Sandra to pick me up for church. Sunday morning, and the Lord says, Tell my people not to be studying the de doctrines of demons. Amen. So I've been saying that ever since. The anointing world revealed through the apostles' doctrine is light and life. Mm -hmm. Acts 2 38 through 42. Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord called. Now, it's the Holy Spirit that called. It wasn't like you heard me say. It wasn't because you were so cute. It wasn't because you were so smart. It wasn't because you were so popular. It wasn't because you were somehow superior to anyone. The Holy Spirit called you to become one of the one-thirders that I talked about who goes through the fire of God. With many other words, he, and that would be Peter, testified and exhorted, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now, I'm telling you, church, there's a division between that which is evil and that which is God in this nation right now. We have got to save ourselves and our children and whatever ministry and whatever mouth and whatever pulpit God has given you from this untoward generation. Amen. We have a generation out there that do not know God. They do not know the ways of God. They do not know the word of God. And they do not know the way, anything about God and how God does things. That's right. Yeah. That's your job. That's right. Yes. It's your job to save them. They gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Jesus Christ is the anointed word. The spirit without measure rested upon Jesus, according to John 3, 34. Scripture teach scriptures teach that the same anointing shall rest upon a people known as the branch of the Lord. The branch of the Lord reveals the light and life of God in the earth. Christ is the central shaft and has the greater adornment and his body is the branches. Christ is central to the Holy Ghost baptism for he is the baptizer in Matthew 3 11. Amen. For one mightier than I shall come behind me, and he shall baptize you in the, in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The branch of the Lord grows out of his roots. We, the branches, spring out of the loins of Jesus. John 15 5 through 8. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Can't be any clearer than that, right? He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you do nothing. Now I don't care how much word you know. I 
I don't care how smart you are. If you're not doing it with Jesus Christ moving through you, it's going to burn as wood, hay, and stubble. Mm -hmm. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. There is a fire burning in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. It is burning out the draw. Yes. It is burning in our government. Yes. And, do you, and it always starts at the top. Yes. And do you not think that it's not going to burn out of us mm -hmm. everything in us that is not of God? Amen. Amen. And if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Candlestick, there are seven lamps. Seven spirits equal one spirit. The seven lamps, the candlestick, equal seven horns, fullness of all power. Seven eyes are all seeing. The seven, uh, the, the, the eyes of the spirit, seven eyes of the spirit, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, and fear of God. Seven colors of the rainbow about the throne the covenant and Joseph's coach. There are specific measures, there are, sorry, there are no specific measurements given in scripture for the candlestick. Now everything else has exact measurements, mm. but not the candlestick. Mm. Now I looked this up last night because I just found it interesting, so I'll share it with you because I simply find it is interesting. You may already know. It's believed that the candlestick and table of showbread was carried off by Titus's soldiers when he destroyed the temple in 70 AD. So I looked this up. And uh, they have paintings and sculptures showing this golden candlestick on the soldier's back and the table of showbread, which was also told with gold. If you look this up on your, on your Google, you'll see it. It's called um, the Ark of Titus. Uh, that was in Rome. And they, this is, they had a measurement of the candlestick there. Their records depict that the lampstand was uh, five feet by three and a half feet. That's the only measurement they have of the candlestick. But the one that when it was, when it was carried to the Ark of Titus in Rome. But there's no proof of it except they have pictures. Of, of the soldier. You can look at it. It's an interesting thing to read. Yeah. It was interesting for me. Mm -hmm. The last stand had a central shaft and uh, six branches or seven, three on each side. Uh, we note that there are now uh, candlesticks that the Jewish people have that have nine, but that was changed somewhere down the road by Maccabees or somebody. Yeah. And uh, they changed yeah. it. It has nothing to do with the pattern of heaven. The original was made according to the pattern that was given to Moses on the mount. Mm -hmm. The ideas concerning the ornamentation of the lampstand are varied. Many describe it as a golden almond bush. And what I do when I see different descriptions, I take the one I like best. <laughs> <laughs> you do when you teach, you can do it as well. You <laughs> The knife or the bud, the flower, and the bowl, like unto almonds, fruit, are three stages in the life of the almond plant. Okay, three stages in the life of the Christian. Salvation and the outer court, coming into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, becoming an overcomer, and coming into maturity as the Son of God. Seven lamps on top hold the oil. The almond plant was the first to come to life in the spring. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was Aaron's rod mm -hmm. was an almond rod. Mm -hmm. The knot or bud could also be likened to a crown or pillar. The lamp stand had 66 ornaments. There are 66 books of the Bible. We can compare with the seven lamps, with the seven crowns of the overcomer, incorruptible crown, crown of rejoicing, crown of righteousness, crown of life,
crown of glory, crown of honor, and a golden crown. If you want the scriptures, I'll give them to you. They're in my notes. It is the resurrection life, power, and energy of the risen Christ that flows in us, enabling the church to reveal the nature of Jesus in the fruit of the Spirit. You said resurrection, so when you said five feet by 30 feet, I looked at the cross, that's probably about that size. Okay, kind of looks like yeah. the cross. Okay. It is that same divine energy and anointing experienced in the Holy Ghost baptism and the gift of the Spirit. The Apostles' doctrine is quickened to our spirit because of Christ's resurrection life. The branch of the Lord will be energized by the power of Christ's endless life. This is not a conclusive study of the last stand, and it cannot be complete without a complete study on Revelation 2.5, which I'm not going to do today. But remember from where you have fallen, Mm-hmm. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Mm-hmm. Every church that God establishes, there are different levels of fellowship. Every, when everything God never had to start, I soak it in prayer. Then there is soaking it in the Word of God. And then I have a visitation of the lamp stand. When the lamp stand comes in, you got a church. And when the Spirit of God goes out, the lamp stand goes out. It is written. That's another teaching. We're not going to stay here today. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. The restoration to the church of the foundation ministry of the apostle and prophet as the leadership of a New Testament church, and it has been restored. The apostle and prophet. Oh, the prophet's been restored, okay? I heard this, when was it? In the 90s. Was it the 90s or the 80s, the prophet was coming in. I heard a trumpet blow. I saw her trumpet blow. I heard the lion roar. I heard the roar of the lion in my living room in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And there became, and the prophetic began to come forth everywhere. Except Katie, Texas. <laughs> 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 it was closed down. Uh-oh. When I came here. Yeah, right. It was closed down. Mm-hmm. They had it closed down. Right. No prophet could prophesy then. How long ago? 21 years ago. I don't know how. And um, now it's everywhere. It's it's loose everywhere. Even into the denominational churches, they do it on the sly. That's right. Praise the Lord. Yes, and they were coming in 20 years ago. But they are still not in the main assembly. It had to be in the it's okay. It's the prophet is in. The prophet is now part of the leadership of God's church. I'm not talking about your church. I'm talking about God's church. Universal. Now the apostle is being set in. And y'all saw the prophet. You saw how many mistakes they made. You saw how they used their gifts to raise money, that they prophesied to your itchy ears to tell you how pretty you are and how beautiful you are, so they will, you will give them money. Mm-hmm. And you saw God begin to bring forth the prophets and to prove and clean their gifts in them. Okay, so now we're seeing the apostles being brought forth, and it's going to be the same way. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be set in. And they're going to go through the same testings, the same trials, you see, because this is happening in the holy place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That fell really strong, didn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Whew. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. There's a prophetic word in the house. Speak it. That's the abomination 
of desolation. The abominations in a holy place. Yes. Until you hear the word of God, he will shut your mouth until such a time as the abomination of desolation comes to pass, and then he will open your mouth and you will speak it. I hear, be holy, for I am holy. Just keep hearing that. Jesus, what I do now. Okay. So when the apostle and the prophet are established in, in governmental order of the kingdom of God. Okay. The only governmental order that we are under is the government of the kingdom of God. And when this is established, then the church will be like the book of, will have the power of the book of Acts. Yeah. Everybody will. People say, well, we want to go back to have a church like the Book of Acts. Yeah. Well, they were operating in holiness. That's right. Mm -hmm. They were out, and there was and, and there was holiness in them. If they didn't have holiness, somebody's gonna fall dead. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it happened again. Motivation. 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 Justification by faith, water baptism by immersion, sanctification. I should go ahead and bring my parallels here. Justification by faith is the brazen is a type of the brazen altar. Water baptism by immersion, the brazen labor. Sanctification, the brazen labor. Divine healing, the brazen altar and the table of showbread, which we'll get into next week in case I finish this today. 
Baptism of the Holy Ghost is the golden candlestick. Fruit and gifts of the Spirit, the candlestick. The fivefold ministry, the bars, the candlestick, and the showbread. Laying on a hand is the table of showbread. Body ministry, board, showbread, the altar of incense, full maturity in the Ark of the Covenant. Because of the length, depth, breadth, and height of the teaching on the showbread, uh, we'll see if we can do that next week. Okay, I'm going to try 11.52. I'm going to try to get through the anointing oil maybe in maybe 15 minutes, maybe. Let's see what I can do here. Okay, in January 2007, Joanne and I attended a home meeting. The guest minister was Michael O'Brien from England. <laughs> that was the first time to meet him. I think, I think it's the first time I met Joe, too. And when Michael called me out to minister, he said, this is it, the little house on the periphery. Quality, quality, quality. You minister fine steak. You bring it. <laughs> you, bet, you bring in other ministries to bring in the spice. Mm. <laughs> However, the spice you minister will be strong enough, the people will not want you to bring in speakers, but will want you to preach the steak and the spice. Mm. As I wrote my notes in 2007, that may not be verbatim, but it's close to what he prophesied to me. That's really how I think. Mm -hmm. And I had that point. Now I have verbalized that since then, but I had never verbalized I didn't tell y'all what I was doing. Yeah. I'd bring in the steak and get y'all just enough of it so you wouldn't choke, and then I'd bring in some spice, <laughs> and I would lighten it up, and then I would come back and throw y'all some more steak. I was working at it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, just the truth. Spirit God knew what I was doing. Um, <clears throat> As you know, in the past, I guess still am, I've been criticized, I've even persecuted for preaching strong messages. People don't want to hear it. What? <laughs> Nothing else. What? And these are messages given to me by the Lord. So he's supposed to tell me he wants me to preach it somewhere else. You know? And then besides, that's who I am. Yeah. I mean, there's no separating me. You know, don't talk to me about your recipe. Just feed it to me. You know, I'm not going to be interested in your recipe. <laughs> <laughs> I've been try I'll be trying to figure out what's going on up there in heaven. Someone came recently, I think it was Mark. He said, I'm always looking up there. I am. I'm always looking out there. Higher, farther. So I haven't felt to water them down or apologize. Amen. Don't do it. But I still try to keep a healthy balance by bringing in a variety of ministers from all streams. You know that. I keep y'all synthesized and interested. I don't want to get boring. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm blessed too. Amen. It keeps us healthy. Yeah. Okay. But unknown to Brother O'Brien, I had planned for some weeks to preach on Sunday crowned with oil. Oil compounded after the art of the apocryphal. I was working on that message, but I just hadn't had time to put it all together. But I was working on it when he gave me the word, and he had no idea. Moreover, the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh. Give five hundred shekels and a sweet cinnamon, half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels and a sweet calamus, 250 shekels and a cassia, 500 shekels, and after the shekel of the sanctuary, and all of olive to a hen, and you shall make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compounded after the art of the apothecary, it shall be holy anointing oil. Okay, the Lord gave Moses, the, again, he gave Moses the, the recipe. He gave Moses the pattern. He gave Moses the recipe. And a detailed recipe. Each of the four spices was a head spice. Psalm 133. It's a what spice? Head. 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 So I missed it. Myrrh, cinnamon, cassia, cinnamon. Uh, myrrh. I'm going to go on each one of them. Cinnamon. Okay. Cassia. Calamus. Calamus. So 
Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head and ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. These spices run down the light of our head, Jesus Christ, to glow on us and then through us. A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He is our great high priest and the only true vine, the source of all life. All that we are and all that we have flows down from our ascended Lord. Mm -hmm. Each member of Christ's body is a principal spice, a necessary part, a vital ingredient. Each of us has derived our ministry gift from Jesus and the Holy Spirit, our glorious head. The gifts of the Spirit come through the Holy Spirit. The offices come through a visitation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And apart from him, we can do nothing. The four principal spices uh, were combined with a hint of olive oil. Each of these spices is God's holy in God's holy compound were carefully chosen and set apart because of their unique quality, fragrance, or aroma. The first one is myrrh, a fragrant resin that would ooze from the myrrh shrub. Myrrh means bitter. This is one of the gifts the wise men brought to Jesus at his birth. He was to be a man of sorrows in his life and in his death. His true joy would spring forth from his obedience to the Heavenly Father and his abiding relationship with him. He gloried not in his ministry and in his works and in his accomplishments, but gave all glory to the Father, who was the one who performed these mighty works through him. Have we all not wondered at times how many men or women who have seemingly carried a lot of anointing have so often lacked the grace and beauty of the Holy Spirit in their lives. It's because they have refused to allow the spice of myrrh to be mingled with the oil in the Apostle Peace of God. Some teach because Christ suffered, we do not have to suffer. There is this teaching, and I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember this teaching. I'm here and even today. Do you? Yeah. We're so separated from everything. Mm -hmm. Jesus warned his disciples, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of Matthew is pure myrrh and reveals the king who suffered and died at the hands of his people. Myrrh was an embalming spice used in the embalming of Jesus, a preservative, beautifying quality, used in healing, a perfume, costly gift fit for the king, mixed with wine and offered to Jesus on the cross. It was free flowing. All of us, every person I've ever known, have experienced some bitter things. And the high priest of our salvation will mix that into our lives. All great men and women have been processed with Mark. We're watching Judge Kavanaugh be processed. This does not mean the consequences of lawlessness of sowing to the wind and then reaping the whirlwind. That's what Congress is doing. They're sowing to the wind and they're going to reap the whirlwind. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think he said that. That was Jesus yeah. scripture, didn't he? Yes, he did. He, he prophesied it to them, he spoke it to them. He did. <laughs> Why have some tasted more myrrh than others? It's tough to pasture during those times because you have no answers. You just know. Let me tell you, you got to go through it. And I said you go through it because Jesus Christ is going to take you through it. Yeah. And the last thing anyone needs to hear is a religious novice spouting <laughs> off about lack of faith. Yeah, that's right. 
Mm -hmm. You know, we've all been through that. Job's com a, a comforters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those who are destined for the heights of Zion, and I posted this last night on Facebook, yeah. will be taken to the depths and cloud. Mm -hmm. You want to be used by God? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, about those who are taken to the heights of Zion, that's just me talking, okay. will be taken to the depths and be plowed. Yes, it's it. experience. Go it's in the Bible. I'm going to go bore your, your website, your Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to be used by God? You want a ministry? Hmm. Hey, Cheryl, how about it? <laughs> <laughs> you going to be going to take it, uh, Cheryl, God used her mildly. Mm -hmm. He's taking her to a new depth and he's plowing her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She won't hear me tell. He don't want to hear me <laughs> say that. <laughs> how, 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 how much do you want God to use you? How high do you want to go? Sweet cinnamon. I'm going to finish this. Y'all let me done 10 minutes? I'll skip over it fast. There's some more notes here, but I'll skip over it. I get to get to preach it. <laughs> cinnamon was a spice from the bark of the cinnamon small evergreen tree and had a certain fragrance, sweetness. It means to stand up right, to be erect. Mm -hmm. you got to be a stand up person if you're going to go through this. The holy oil, if truly compounded by the apothecary, will cause the anointed people of God to stand erect and to walk in truth. It is said of Jesus that he loved righteousness and hated iniquity. We glory in justification and the imputed righteousness of Christ, which we receive by faith. If we truly receive this righteousness and walk in it, we're going to hate iniquity. These two things are mutually exclusive. Truth and deception cannot coexist. You cannot eat from the table of demons and eat from the table of war. Righteousness and iniquity cannot coexist. One or the other will overshadow the other and eventually exclude it. This represents sweet things, the sweetness of grace. I'm skipping some stuff here. So, the Sheila Mike Bride in the Song of Psalms prophetically describes Jesus Christ, the one who is altogether lovely husband in the church. His cheeks are a bed of spice as sweet flowers, his lips like lilies, dropping sweet smelling myrrh. His mouth is most sweet. Sweet cinnamon is the gospel of Mark and shows the sweetness of the servant of Jehovah ever willing to minister to others. God sends us happy days when you need them. Every time I've ever gone through a severe battle in the church, the Lord has caught something happy into my life mm -hmm. to offset it. Mm -hmm. Every single time mm -hmm. when we were going through this transition here, uh, the Lord gave my daughter a house in Kerrville. Mm -hmm. I went over there and prayed through that transition because it was a happy place for me to have, to be in. Mm -hmm. He will do it. Mm -hmm. It will just show up. Sweet Calumet. I skipped a bunch of these if y'all want to go back and study. Okay. It's the third principle spice. Represents government and divine order. The extended rule of divine anointing. A stick in the hand of Moses as he tended the sheep and Midian became the rod of God. When he stands before Pharaoh. The shepherd's staff becomes a scepter of power and authority. A reed shaken in the wind strikes fear in the heart of a wicked, powerful Herod. A man manacled with fetters causes another governor to tremble. Jesus' life is the extension of the Father's rule and reign. The scepter of his kingdom is righteousness. This man is the divine measure, the anointed rod or reed. Jesus purchased or procured the church with his own blood, having given himself for us an offering to God for sweet-smelling favor. 
sweet callousness, which means branch is the gospel of Luke and tells of the man Christ Jesus, the extension and express image of the Father. Number four is Kaisia. The fourth and final required principal spice, which represents true humility of anointed worship. This is not performance. This is when we worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. A fragrant tree resembling the cinnamon tree, though its bark is less delicate in taste and perfume, has purple flowers and grows at a very high altitude. In addition to its use in the holy anointing oil, cassia was used to scent garments with its perfume. Jesus Christ, heaven's bride, heaven's bridegroom, came out of the ivory palaces smelling of cassia. Psalm 45, 8. He humbled himself and became obedient to death of the cross. And the anointing oil was poured on him as the heavenly Aaron. Purple speaks of royalty. Christ's regal character is manifested in us as kings and priests unto God. Genuine humility, enabled by the divine anointing, brings promotion in God. And the minister of the gospel all of you have ministered. The ambitions out there where it will wear you out. The selfish ambition of people who want to be recognized. The people who want to be lifted up. The people who want to be given a platform. But it's our humility which brings promotion in God. The same anointing that scented the garments ministry of the bridegroom will descend upon his body. And let me tell you, I don't care how humble you are. You've got to watch it. You have got to watch it. Especially after God uses you. First, when you let the Holy Ghost come on you and use you in a tight, nice way, and the power of God falls on you in a powerful way, and you walk out of that meeting, you better be careful not to strut. That's right. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you do, you're going to be a hit before you get out the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the flesh can produce a legalistic mock humility. But this spice is compounded in the apostrophe through a reverential fear and worship. True worship is primarily a state of being and not an act to perform. That's right. mm -hmm. Jesus talks about true worshipers and not merely about the act of worship. He doesn't say anything about that. Let us seek to minister Christ that men might become worshipers rather than trying to simulate worship in a religious service. Yes. <laughs> I heard a grunt back there, Henry. Yes. <laughs> That's right. True worship leads to total commitment to his will. I never preach a message, I never teach a message that during worship others don't lay it all down. Kathy is the gospel of John and illustrates Jesus as the high flying eagle, the pattern sun who soared up to the Father in consummate worship. All four blended spices are required to produce the genuine anointing. All four spices are to be worked in every Christian. And now the oil, olive oil. And I'll, I'll be through here in five minutes. I told y'all I'd rush through it. Olive oil is consistently used in the scriptures as a type of the Holy Spirit. But the anointing oil is mingled with all these spices to more clearly portray the attributes of the Spirit of God, whose presence in our life will give forth the fragrance of Christ. All of those are mixed into one. The lampstand of the Holy Spirit is one. They're all mixed into one. And when they're mixed into one, and we come out without bitterness, we come out without anger. We come out without issues. <laughs> then we become the fragrance of Christ. He comes 
into our lives to make the Lord Jesus real to us. Now, when you go out in the world of Christendom, everyone's not going to follow this view. So what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to love them and overlook them mm -hmm. and forgive them even though they're stinking. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to make the Lord Jesus real to us and to shine forth from our lives in the beauty of holiness. The oil was produced by beating the olive berries. Gethsemane means the oil press. It was in the garden that Jesus took the cup of bitterness and told his self-sacrifice. It was on the cross that he drank it to the dregs until it was finished. These different ingredients of anointing oil remind us of our various ministries. Not everybody is like you, nor has everyone been through what you have experienced. We understand this, and we won't be so quick to judge others by our walk. Amen. Yes. And we can understand that people, even the apostles, are being called out to be set. Even the apostles are coming through that holy place to overcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. but just because they're called as apostles, and God is setting them into that office. And it hasn't been set yet. I mean, they are being set. They, are, they, are, they have been called yeah. to be apostles. They have been called to be apostles. They are being prepared into that office. As they're going through this holy place, they're going to have to go through all of these demons and all of these challenges that are still in the realm of their soul. Mm -hmm. Because the soul is the realm of the holy place. We haven't been willing to undergo the mingling together of the virtues of Christ according to the art of the apothecary. Only God knows the secret of this wonderful moment. Only he knows the recipe made according to the pattern that is in heaven. The bitterness of the myrrh removes the bitterness of past circumstances, disappointments, and many wounds inflicted upon us in the battles of life. There is a fragrance and sweetness from our life that we could not know, except as we will find ourselves ground and pulverized in the mortars of God's apostasy. We discover that the bruised reed of our calamus is never really broken, and the smoking flax is not quenched. Brother, God has led us this way to prepare us for a richer anointing, a more pure anointing, a holy oil that will crown our heads with priestly virtue and priestly ministry in the house of God. So we pray, Lord, compound us together in your divine apothecary. Mm -hmm. You're watching a man be compounded. On your screen, you're watching it happen. And all the graces and virtues of the of Lord Jesus, of the Holy Spirit to our lives and mingle us together in your holy oil according to your own art and wisdom. Then we may know your nature and discover the crown of priestly ministry. Give us not the power the rulers of the Gentiles exercise to lord it over others. Rather give us true spiritual power, man and of God. Then we can rule over the restless hearts of men by administration of your grace, peace, and truth. Praise the Lord. Next week, I got through. I got this done. I think I did. Good job.